Hello, welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I'm going to take a look at the puzzle in a moment. Um, just uh, a plea, really. If you enjoy these videos, please do subscribe for the channel. Um, please tell your friends about us. We're trying to get our viewing numbers up a bit at the moment, and it'd be uh, really appreciated. Um, any support you could give us in doing that. Um, what I wanted to talk to uh, or talk through today, I guess, is the advantage that an experienced solver has in solving one of these puzzles compared to the beginner. Um, and as I was solving this earlier on, it struck me how, how fortunate I was, I guess, because several of the clues I was able to almost write in just because I I knew the short synonym that was likely to be involved or I, I'd seen the form of the word play before. So I thought what I might do is just take you through the puzzle and show you where an experienced solver has an advantage and maybe next time these sort of things come up, uh, you'll have that advantage too. So, one across, cool, informed female designer making comeback. Um, the word I keyed in on when I read this clue was the word informed, because I I know a short synonym for the word informed, and in fact that totally then um, opened up this clue for me. So I knew that informed is quite often sang, as in you know what. A, a criminal might do on another criminal um, and once you have sang as a possible component of this answer you can see how it sort of it becomes much more straightforward um, so sang froid being the answer meaning cool we've got f there for female and then dior reversed for the designer making a comeback so this clue was a write-in for me as an experienced solver whereas i guess for for many others it, it won't have been. Similarly, Six Across, back to commercial corporation in fact. Well, commercial is so often an abbreviate or you know ad in these crosswords that I'm immediately thinking, okay, this is a reversal of ad at the start of this. So I've got a D and an A immediately at the start of this answer. And corporation, well you might think corporations going to be, you know, limited or CO for company. Well, no. Very often in times crosswords, corporation is getting at the fact that corporation can define your stomach, and a short synonym for your stomach is your tum. Uh, and so, datum again is um, uh, was a, was a relatively straightforward clue. Nine across, no, there wasn't no. I had no advantage there really. Ten across, well, a bit of an advantage, hit high in the air. I was immediately thinking of two short synonyms I know for that, which are lob and sky. Uh, and once you think of sky, um, you know, I'm sure we all know a bird that begins with sky like this um, and ends in lark. L and arc there for large and vessel for the arc. Uh, 11 down now certainly didn't have any advantage there. That was a brutal clue. We'll come back to that right at the end. Um, I didn't really have an advantage in 12 cross. Again, 13 was, was a write-in. And write-in for two reasons. Firstly, the word sum there. Whenever, you, whenever, whenever I see the word sum, I'm automatically thinking that the answer is going to be hidden in what follows. So, you know, that, that's one advantage. But the other advantage is... It's this expression of terrific screenwriters. It's so unnatural. Um, you would only see those two words together, I believe, in a crossword clue. So when I see those words together, I'm immediately thinking the compiler has had to use those precise words in that precise order for some reason. And the most obvious reasons are either that it's going to be an anagram or it's going to be a hidden and in this case, with the word sum, I knew it was going to be a hidden and it was simply a case of extracting it. And you can see there, reversed in terrific screenwriters, is sci-fi. Um, which is on short mission to seal husband in cooking pot? Well, the only advantage I had here was that I know husband is going to be H. And I could think of, I thought of coven for a group of, of witches. I didn't immediately solve it from this, but... Um, we'll see later that that was that was really the key to solving that clue. Um, not, no massive crossword ease in 17 across. 
18 across is an exercise in reading clues correctly. Um, so one piece of advice I'd give you is when reading a cryptic clue, try not to read it as a sentence. If you do, you'll read this clue like this. Invited to accept golf clubs, proof of membership. And that will make it much harder to solve. Um, when you see the expression golf club, it's so naturally to, no, so natural to put, put it together that it misleads the solver in trying to understand actually how to read the clue correctly. Um, and the way to read the clue correctly is to sort of break the clue in half after the word golf. So invited to accept golf. If we remember that golf can be used in the international radio alphabet to indicate a G, all of a sudden we're looking for a four-letter word to put around a G to be a club's proof of membership. And that's a badge, so bade going around the G there. So, yeah, be careful not to fall into uh, the trap of reading clues too literally. Uh, Canaletto there. No, I don't think there was any particular advantage. This was a write-in, actually, the Primrose's cousin. Um, over 40 and flipping sanctimonious. Well, there are two parts of this clue that, that really an experienced solver will get a grip on very quickly. Firstly, 40 is immediately making us think of the Roman numeral, which is XL for 40. And then flipping sanctimonious. Well, sanctimonious is incredibly uh, frequently used to indicate the word the word pi, uh, which can mean sanctimonious. If I flip that, I get IP. Um, and you know, so I've got an XL and an IP in a five letter word. Well, you don't have to be a genius then to work out the rest of it. And ox slip is the answer. It must be a cousin of the primrose, which I certainly didn't know, but didn't really need to know. Broadcast a child friendly Q&A about tanks. Um, uh, I don't know that there's a particular advantage here, except to know that broadcast is very often used to indicate the word air. If you air something, you broadcast it. So knowing these short synonyms is an advantage here, because if we reverse air, A, U, as in the cinema um, classification for a film that's child-friendly, Q, and A, we do all of that, we get Aquaria, which is the answer. Tanks, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, this was a difficult or a fairly unusual word, but the word play is very helpful here. So craft, fine, cryptic, clue, more or less. Well, more or less can very often be circa, which could be just C or it could be CA, cryptic, Fine, that can be very often abbreviated to F. I think is in, I don't know what, why fine is F. Maybe it's something to do with pencils or something like that. Um, and then cryptic clue, well, that's an anagram of clue. And feluca, I think, is a Mediterranean craft of some sort. Uh, didn't really have an advantage with Ellington at 27 across. Let's carry on. Um, this was a write-in. Gnome. Whenever I see the word gnome, I'm automatically thinking of a banker because you know Swiss gnomes are very often financiers, which was the answer here. Well, we have in for fashionable, going in fancier for a connoisseur. This was a very difficult clue. We'll come back to that at the end. Um, Again, six down is a write-in. You dated visiting lecturer. Well, there's two bits of sort of cryptic crossword ease there. You dated is hinting at the old form of the word you, which is ye. And then a lecturer is very often a don. So if we put the ye in the don, we get doyen, which is, of course, a senior fellow. Um, much, I don't have much advantage in any of these I didn't this is a this is a crossword word I, I mean I don't know how often we see this word other than crosswords um, I mean when I read this clue I immediately knew after two words I was looking at an anagram of file edict for exactly the same reason 
uh, that we saw sort of terrific screenwriters earlier, you just don't see the words vile and edict together unless they absolutely have to be. Um, so the rest of it is farcical. Okay, that's telling me I need to anagram the letters and a Latin word for to wit is lat, which I only know from crosswords. Uh, and I think this was the only other example of where I had uh, experience so I would have a big advantage. Climbing high mountain, I was immediately thinking of a reversal of Alp. So again, you can see how helpful it is to the experienced set solver to know these short synonyms that come up again and again and again. Um, you know, and once I'm thinking of a reversal of Alp, I've got three of the five letters in this answer. And you certainly don't have to be a genius now to think of a word for prairie that goes in here. Um, of course, it's plain with surrounded by being in. So just just talk quickly about, I thought, the two hardest clues in the puzzle. So five down. Worried about group of farmers splitting up communal resource in quantity. This was a very brutal piece of wordplay. Um, the answer is dessert spoonful, believe it or not. Um, and the way this breaks down is worried about is saying reverse a word for worried. You can see there that hidden in this answer is the word stressed. So we reverse the word stressed. A group of farmers is the NFU, National Farmers Union, and that's splitting up pool, which is a communal resource. And if you do all of that, string it together, you get dessert spoonful, which is, of course, a quantity. Not the most helpful definition in the world, um, but uh, I suppose a long enough answer that eventually you can sort of come up with the art um, and come up with it from the checking letters. Well, let's finally have a look at this clue, which was my last one in. So, cut down on binding agent. Um, well, I don't know. These were the letters that I had at this point. Maybe I'll put those in just to see if that helps. So already we're looking at a very, very strange construction here. I, you know, When I first looked at this, I couldn't think of any word I knew that fitted. So it was really a case of trying to understand what the wordplay meant um, in order to get a handle on what the answer might be. Um, now, cut down. Well, if you're down, you're glum. And if you cut the word glum, you remove its last letter. So that would give you GLU. On, that could be plain text. And you get this word, glue on, which... Uh, I'm not at all sure what it means, but I think it's some sort of subatomic particle that binds things. And that's being defined as binding agent, which is, I mean, that's really quite difficult, um, especially as I'm sure we're all thinking of binding agents as in, I don't know, some sort of cooking um, monosodium glutamate or some, something like that. But anyway, gluon is the answer there. So well done if you did get that. Um, when you were solving it, and if you understood it, even more fantastic because it's a very difficult word play, very difficult definition to a very obscure word. Um, so with that, I'll say goodbye. We'll be back again tomorrow um, on the channel, and uh, thanks for watching.